It's historic yeah. any time a former president were to be indicted. Now it's the fourth time, <laughs> this time over contesting the election in 2020. This is the first time I've ever been ashamed of my country. John Gotti never even had four indictments at once. Every time more bad news comes out about Hunter Biden or Joe Biden, you can set a stopwatch within hours. Some clown goes and indicts Donald Trump again. I don't think this would pass on a first year criminal law exam as a, an appropriate indictment. You're attacking a opposing candidate through the legal system. That's not how our legal system works. These cases, in my opinion, do not have any merit whatsoever. From all the four cases that have been charged for indictments, these cases are purely political. And under the Georgia law, there's a statute that limits the Republican governor's ability to pardon. And I think that the legislature in Georgia needs to amend that statute and give Governor Kemp the ability to pardon. Are we gonna let county prosecutors start prosecuting the president of the United States? States, the former president of the United States, you open up Pandora's box to the presidency. This is what is frustrating to people, to see them throwing everything at the wall, to see anything that might stick for Donald Trump, because they don't care in actuality how it is they prevent him from becoming president of the United States again. That is their end goal, and they will try everything as evidence now by this fourth ridiculous indictment. You hear that? That's the sound of inconsolable MAGA chuds sobbing uncontrollably across the country because, as you might have heard by now last night, Trump was predictably indicted for a fourth time along with 18 other people, including Rudy Giuliani, Mark Meadows, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis, and Sidney Powell, among others. Now, Trump specifically is indicted on 13 felony counts, bringing his combined total across four cases to 91 felony counts. Now, when it comes to the Georgia indictment, and Politico explains that Trump is being indicted for the following. One count of violating the state's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, commonly known as RICO. Six counts of making false statements and writings, filing false documents, or conspiring to do so. Three counts of soliciting the violation of oath by a public officer. Two counts of conspiring to commit first-degree forgery. One count of conspiring to impersonate a public officer. And the indictment itself is 98 pages long and incredibly thorough and detailed. And as I usually do, I will encourage you to read the entire thing. I'll link to it down below. But of course, I know many of you don't have time, so I'll also link to a summary by Politico. But before we move on and get to the reactions, which is what I know most of you are here for, uh, I think that I have to point this out here. This is one of the most important elements about this indictment, in my opinion. So if you go to page 20, where the acts of racketeering are described, Act 1 looks like a nail in Trump's coffin when it comes to proving criminal intent. Quote, on or about the fourth day of November 2020, Donald John Trump made a nationally televised speech falsely declaring victory in the 2020 presidential election. Approximately four days earlier, on or about October 31st of 2020, Donald Trump discussed a draft speech with unindicted co-conspirator Individual 1, whose identity is known to the grand jury, that falsely declared victory and falsely claimed voter fraud. The speech was an overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. In other words, before the election even took place, they were writing speeches where they planned to declare the election stolen. Yeah. How do you know that the election is stolen if it didn't even take place yet? I mean, obviously, this demonstrates that he's not just delusional about the election. His intent was criminal. He knew what he was doing. But in response to this indictment, he predictably attacked Fannie Willis and announced his plans to release, quote, a large, complex, detailed, but irrefutable report on the presidential election fraud, which took place in Georgia. And he's planning on doing this on Monday. And he adds, based on the results of this conclusive report, all charges should be dropped against me and others. There will be a complete exam exoneration. Sure, Jan. Now, Trump has 10 days to surrender for his arraignment, and thankfully, we might finally get what we've all wanted for a very long time, because Fulton County Sheriff Pat Labatt told reporters this. We are following our, part, our, our normal practices, and so it doesn't matter your status. We, we have mugshots ready for you. So we are finally going to get a mugshot, something that I've wanted since the first indictment, but apparently on indictment four, 
we're getting what we've all been asking for. And I swear to God, Pat, if you are lying, I'm going to be pissed. I want to see the mugshot. I want the memes to roll in. And I think that if you raise this expectation and you don't deliver, millions of Americans are going to be pissed. I think I speak for all of us collectively here. But moving on, uh, it feels like the response from the right this time is even more unhinged than usual. And I'm not sure if they were this unhinged last time and I just didn't notice it as much. But they were losing their shit over this indictment in particular. And I'm not going to pretend like that's not funny. I'm sorry. It is funny. The reactions are ridiculous. And I don't think it's bad that we make fun of them for this. For example, right-wing grifter Tim Pool has been tweeting through it. And in response to someone stupidly calling it Banana Republic stuff, Tim Pool says, actually, it's com it's communist revolution stuff. And after indictment three, he said this is a civil war. But he also reiterated that again, confirming that we are indeed in a civil war officially because of this indictment. But as Chad's of TikTok points out, this isn't necessarily a new thing for Tim Pool because he's been saying that we're in a civil war for four years now. So, I mean, I don't know if this is him being delusional or if it's just wishful thinking, but either way, it is absolutely maximum copium and it makes him look like an unhinged dipshit. But let's not forget about our good friend Ben Shapiro, who tweeted out, whatever you think of the Trump indictments, one thing is for certain. The glass has now been broken over and over again. Political opponents can be targeted by legal enemies running for office now carries the legal risk of going to jail on all sides now to be fair to ben shabibo he's not the first person to say this but i love this tweet from him in particular because he gave all of us in saying this the opportunity to this shoe him with a clip from 2014 on larry king live where he said this. I'm not sure we could indict Washington, but I think that uh, certainly I'm sure there, something was done. Uh, Washington was relatively clean. But it, but, it, but if you look at, at, you know, George W. Bush or if you looked at Bill Clinton or if you looked at Ronald Reagan. Sure. I mean, the answer would be that, that you could and, and people should be wary. I mean, this is this is sort of the case that I'm making is that we've become so comfortable with the executive branch of the government abusing its citizens and violating our rights and violating what they're structured to do under the law that we've just become used to it. And, and if we start treating them as criminals, maybe they'll think twice before they act so criminally in the future. Mm hmm. Fast forward to today and Ben Shapiro is pretending like the indictments against Trump are illegitimate because he knows if he doesn't play along, his fascist viewers will skewer him. But Ben Shapiro is an attorney. He knows that Trump is guilty and that these indictments are indeed warranted and legitimate. But he has to pretend, which uh, is sad, but it's also hilarious and pathetic. Now, while we're on the subject of hypocrites, I'd be remiss to not look at Sean Hannity's response because he is predictably towing the line writing on Twitter, quote, they're taking away President Trump's First Amendment right to free speech and the right to challenge a rigged and stolen election. And look, nobody is saying that Trump can't challenge the election and even lie about it, but he can't actively try to overturn the election and disenfranchise millions of voters. I don't know how many times this point has to be said, but I'd imagine we're going to make be making this point over and over again because this is their go-to defense but it's bullshit and they know it's bullshit they are intentionally lying because there's no good defense for what trump did he tried to overturn a democratic election and they know that if obama or any democrat tried to do this we would never hear the end of it and that's not just speculation because here's what hannity said back in 2016 about the prospect of hillary clinton being sworn in as president while she was still under investigation so think about the magnitude of all of this for a second hillary clinton could be sworn into office while still being under investigation from the FBI, which would then put this country into a major constitutional crisis. Now, Clinton says Donald Trump, oh, he's not fit to serve in the Oval Office. But she, and she alone, has created a situation that could do severe damage to this country and the office of the presidency and prevent this country from solving problems. That means getting Americans back to work, fixing our broken educational system, fixing a broken health care system, fixing porous borders, vetting refugees. All of this needs to be done. Balancing a budget, stop robbing our kids. So that's what he said about the potential of a president being sworn in while under investigation. So you can imagine that a president who's been indicted four times being sworn in is much more problematic, right? Well, of course not. If you're asking, where's that energy for Donald Trump? Well, it's not going to be there and it never will be there because these people are hacks and it doesn't matter what their side does because by default, their side is always automatically correct and just. And the other side is always automatically incorrect and unjust. 
There's no room for nuance or objectivity. It's just my team good, your team bad. Now, Jenna Ellis, who was also indicted, tweeted this. The Democrats and the Fulton County DA are criminalizing the practice of law, which is quite the take. But Dilbert creator Scott Adams chimed in and he pointed out that there are a lot of attorneys that are part of this indictment. And he wrote in response to that, how are all the lawyers in America feeling today? Safe? Now, what I love about this is not just how unhinged and stupid this is, but how others quickly chimed in and ratioed him. So one person wrote, the ones who know they're not criminals are feeling just fine. Another person says, yes, because we understand our ethical boundaries and the law. And like the rebel that he is, he retweeted this. When you can be indicted for saying there's election fraud, there's election fraud. And Scott Adams responded to that saying, I have not seen credible evidence of election fraud, but the bad guys are signaling it exists. And that, my friends, is some interesting logic. And I feel like you can't come to that conclusion unless you are a dumb fuck. And the reason why that's not a very compelling argument for those who don't already see it is because... If they actually believed that you could be indicted for simply saying that election fraud exists, they wouldn't be sharing that fucking image, don't you think? Who would go out of their way to get themselves in trouble just to, like, prove a, a fucking point? These people are so stupid. Reading their tweets and responses to this is making me feel like I'm crazy. But... This is all about a narrative, right? That's the narrative that they are pushing. And Liz Wheeler contributed to this saying, it's not just Trump they're coming after. They're coming next for our free speech if we dare dissent. Except again, how many people were arrested for simply questioning the election results? There are millions of Americans literally who think that Biden stole the election. They're not getting arrested. The ones who are getting arrested are the ones who took action and broke the law to overturn the 2020 election. Now, listen, when it comes to reactions, we can go on all day, but the point is I haven't seen a single Republican objectively look at this indictment on its merit, right? They work backwards from the conclusion that Trump is good and always good, and even if they know deep down that this indictment is indeed legitimate, they simply can't bring themselves to admit that because they'll either be expelled from the movement or they have to grapple with the reality that they've been following a charlatan and that causes cognitive dissonance. So what we have in effect is a cult where they're all experiencing cognitive dissonance at best or psychosis at worst. And it doesn't matter how many indictments there are or how compelling the evidence is, because when you have politicians, mainstream media and right wing grifters validating this false reality that you've chosen to live in, the evidence doesn't have to matter because you can just choose to ignore it or deny it altogether in favor of a narrative that makes you feel more comfortable. Right. And it's sad that so many Americans choose feelings over facts, but if they're going to make us put up with this bullshit and force us to deal with this charlatan that is Donald Trump, then I don't think that we should feel guilty for laughing at their collective stupidity because it is indeed stupid. And if they're going to act like unhinged fools and choose to deny reality, then I think that normal people should make fun of them. Vagina. <laughs> 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 <laughs>